two, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the What's That Major podcast. I am your host, Vanessa, and today I am joined by Deborah Paulson. Um, Deborah has an associate's degree in applied science and graphic design from Spokane Falls Community College, a bachelor's degree of fine arts from Eastern Washington University, and a master's of degree of fine arts from Claremont Graduate University. Deborah is currently a professor at Los Angeles Mission College, a Guided Pathways co-facilitator and vice chair of art at Los Angeles Mission College. And I've been given the great opportunity of interviewing her. So Deborah, how are you? Very good, thank you. Awesome. Um, so first of all, um, what is the study of fine arts? The, the study of fine arts is, I don't know, um, <laughs> sorry, it threw me off. Um, when, I, I, when I first started studying art, I started studying art um, in high school. I think what got me sort of excited about it was a jewelry class. And just the fact that you could really do something with your hands and, and make something and have a product that you could that you could share with people and being able to do things like painting and drawing and design um, was very exciting for me. And it was really enjoyable to um, just have the freedom to explore and, and make things that I enjoyed making. I was lucky enough, I'm, I am a first generation um, college student, and, but I was always encouraged by my family. My father is also a graphic designer and he said, um, he said, do what you love and the money will come. So my family didn't really put pressure on me to have like a specific major or anything like that. They were just happy that I was in college. Yeah, um, I think it's also great when uh, sometimes you have the parent that's already, you know, majored in that to kind of help you or give you advice as to what you should and shouldn't do um, with that major. So at the time uh, when you were first, you know, either getting into college or just maybe finding yourself in your bachelor's degree, uh, were there any career opportunities you saw for yourself with this major that interested you? My, my first major, when I, when I first went to the community college, I sort of thought that I needed to have a major that was sort of associated with a job. So that's why I majored in graphic design. But when I was doing it, it was a long time ago. Uh, over 20 years ago and it was before sort of everything was computerized and um, so we did we learned how to do everything by hand and um, I wasn't a particularly um, good student I think because I was very messy and very expressive mm -hmm. and I remember my teacher would say well you know you're the best student and the worst student at the same time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so I was really lucky to have um, one of my professors um, help me get a uh, help me get a scholarship to the university. And so when I got the scholarship to the university, which was a full ride to any state college in Washington, I was able to change my major to art and just be be much more free and expressive. And the the challenge now is that. Um, students really need to kind of know what they're getting into, like when they major in art. And I think I didn't really think about it too much about, you know, why this was my major or what I was going to do with it for my future. And um, I just sort of kept listening to my professors and sort of believing them like they're saying, um, okay, well, the next step is to go to graduate school. And I didn't really know why to go to graduate school? Why do I need a graduate degree? Um, but I just sort of believe them. And so I think now we're trying to provide much um, 
much more deep information about to students about what you can do sort of with a with a career in art. I started teaching um, when I was in the Bachelor of Fine Arts program at Eastern Washington University. I started teaching little kids um, art classes. So I kind of had an idea that um, I would go into teaching, I guess. Okay, that's awesome. So what or how was the, the demand for this major while you were in school versus now? Um, did you see that while you were at school or was it just something you never paid attention to or how was that like? I, I mean, I think we weren't really given a lot of information. When I went into graphic design, we, we did a lot of fun things like we would drive over to Portland on a bus and we would go um, to big corporations like Nike and we would see what they were doing. And so you could see um, industry experts working in the field. But then when I switched over to fine art, um, I didn't really see it as much. I mean, there was, I had a very dynamic professor, Tom Askman, and we would go on um, field trips to other universities and see shows and things like that. And I know that there was um, a really vibrant um, art center in Spokane, and I could see that other artists were working, and but I didn't really have um, too much background information. I wasn't, I wasn't really confident on how to sort of navigate being an artist. Okay. Now, I know from, you know, what you said, you, you wanted to start this from, you know, doing jewelry in high school. Mm -hmm. um, did you do any other extracurricular activities that would help you specialize in this calling of this, this major that you chose? I don't, I don't know that there was any um, extracurricular activities other than just um, sort of going to art shows, going to lectures, sort of uh, be, you know, like, like, like I mentioned, teaching the little kids, things like that. Um, I wasn't really involved in student government or anything like that. Okay. So what would you say the atmosphere is like within the the fine arts major. How did how did you feel coming into it? Um, I think it was just really exciting when I when I was in undergrad school. There was like a sense of community, so you were sort of like given um, like a corner in in the room or or the wall in the painting lab. And um, every, you know, the different students would come in and, and we'd all be working on our art and, and all of our art was unique and um, sort of idea oriented. And so just that you sort of had um, this creative space and, you know, we would go out, you know, sometimes we go out for drinks or something, you know, after class and just um, being able to, to connect and make new friends that sort of um, were similar to you in the creative aspects. So I think um, there was just, there was a real sense of um, belonging and a sense of sort of this is my place and this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. Um, now, being, you know, that you went through all the school at, going up to your, your master's, did you ever feel like it was very mentally demanding? I think I think when I got to graduate school, I found it a, a lot more challenging. In graduate school at Claremont, you're given like your own studio and your own space to, to make work and, and just explore. And it sort of takes a while to figure out what you're gonna do different than undergrad and how you're gonna develop your portfolio. Mm -hmm. And you have to write a thesis statement and um, you know, maybe it's not huge or anything like that, not, not like a dissertation, it's only maybe 10 pages. Mm -hmm. um, but we did, you know, we did study um, sort of um, different philosophies of art and theories of art. And some of the readings could be pretty, pretty dense and hard to understand. Yeah. Um, so I guess that, that was, um, just 
it could, it could be challenging. Plus you also have a committee and you need to sort of convince them that you deserve your degree and you have to like meet with them on a regular basis and you have to sort of, um, you know, there's like a panel and you have to answer questions and things like that. So that can be pretty intimidating. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, it, so you had to stand in front of them and basically say, Hey, I am deserving of this. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, because what you do, <laughs> <laughs> what you do is you have a, you have a graduate show, mm -hmm. and um, and I don't know if you want me to share any pictures or anything like that, but can, um, you, yeah, that's definitely oh, okay. fine. Um, let me see. Um, there you go. I think I have it open here. So this was um, this was my um, this is my web page and this is my graduate show and this is sort of a, a super condensed um, inf you know information about my show and so you get you get like a gallery space and you get your own space and you um, I, I created an installation and what I was doing was. Um, I was I was sort of fascinated um, with this idea. I met this person um, called Rosemary the Witch, and she she was the owner of this place called the Weird Thrift Store, where I discovered um, microcrystalline wax. And she would sell like these little mojo bags yeah. that like have magic potions or magic wishes in them. And so I ended up sort of basing like my whole show be, um, sort of on things that I discovered in her shop. So I sort of made these things called giant mojo bags and um, and like this one here and they were just, I didn't have any money or anything. And I made all my art out of things I would find in the thrift stores. And um, this one's full of bells. And so like, if you touch it, it rings. <laughs> And it's just made out of like old um, tablecloths and I would make all these knots and um, I would do all this hand sewing yeah. and different things. This one's here is, um, it has like a, um, a cot in it. This one has a book in it. And so basically you're having this show and you do have to sort of like defend your show um, to your committee. And the committee has three people on it. And and one of the members of the committee was like from Pitzer College because there's a conglomerate of five universities, um, Pomona College, Scripps College, Claremont McKenna, Harvey Mudd. And um, so one of the members was not on my committee and she was like the most skeptical. <laughs> yeah, she was the one that had to impress the most, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, it, it worked it worked out in the long run. I don't remember what the what the conversation was exactly at the time, but you just sort of have to explain like your theories of art. And and I think my art was a little bit different than other students mm -hmm. at that time. Um, so yeah, that was my show. I'm very curious as to why things are hidden in your art because you you said there's a cot under the cloth mm -hmm. there's bells within it i i'm curious as to why it's covered yeah i think it's like it's just sort of the the mystery of this sort of hidden thing in there and maybe i felt like it's really a personal expression maybe i felt like i was hidden I don't know. Um, there's one in here that also has like antler bones in it or antlers in it. Antlers fall off of deer naturally and you can find them in the woods. So there wasn't any animals harmed or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think maybe I was sort of um, um, emerging. I think I had a, a really challenging um, childhood because we moved around a lot and my parents were divorced and so I was just yeah. 
kind of getting into um, maybe the darker side of things. Yeah. Yeah. Art, so, yeah. art is definitely, you know, expressing yourself and how you feel. Um, and I think sometimes that works a lot better sometimes than therapy because you you are actually pushing yourself now to to let that out and i think that's a very very cool thing um what were some classes that you remembered that you enjoyed and what were some classes that you remember that you disliked but you still had a great time oh um well, I, re I really liked all the art classes, of course, like the 3D design, you got to um, cast things and make little bronze sculptures. I liked learning about color and, and design. I loved my ceramics class. It actually, my, my undergrad was all, um, almost all ceramics. Oh, wow. And so I really enjoyed those classes. I did not, I did not do well. I remember I got a C in um, theater, oh, and okay. I didn't do well in theater. But I, but I sort of blamed it on the teacher, of course, because like he would just like, um, you know, we had to read all these plays and stuff, and he would play like these old records in the back of the classroom, and we'd have to like listen to these old records, and then he seemed like he was sort of like trying to trick us on the exams because he would come up with some like obscure fact that, you know, was never mentioned. Yeah. And uh, I guess just to test us to see if we actually read the play. So I think that was that was my toughest class. Um, uh, math could be pretty challenging, too, but um, I was able to get through it eventually. <laughs> What, what are a few things you kept that still stick with you from school to this day, from whether it was from college even up to your master's program? Whether it be tips or advice or techniques that you learned? Well, I mean, when you first started asking that, I, I really appreciated the professors that, that really believed in me and really like pushed me a little further. And I, I just, I really, I really needed that. I really needed, I didn't have a lot of confidence. Yeah. And, you know, I needed someone to say, hey, you're good enough to go to graduate school or your art is interesting or, you know, and just sort of keep, keep pushing me that way. Yeah, I, f I feel like teachers are, are important in that way. Um, because there are some kids that that do need that confidence because maybe the the parents are like okay just go to school or the parents aren't very educated as to what um, the child wants and that's where the teacher steps in because they know more about the school system to give them that confidence because when I grew up um, I was just told school was something you had to do um, and I did it but I I had thankfully I had good professors too that gave me that confidence to to do what I wanted and to give me that confidence to pursue it to to whatever degree I, I wanted and I'm very thankful for that that I had professors too that gave me that confidence so from my understanding uh, you graduated in 95 um, so I want to make you feel just a little old I was born <laughs> I was born in 1998, so um, just a few years before me. <laughs> um, so I'm very curious as to know how your major of fine arts has changed since you graduated and what were the good and bad things that changed about it that in your perspective? Because obviously now like with technology, there's so much that that has advanced even in in whatever field you go into now so I'm curious as to, to how you saw it change throughout the years well definitely definitely in graphic design um, when I started um, the computers were just barely coming in and we were doing everything by hand and and so I I still can like um, I I 
you know, sort of taught myself, you know, Photoshop and Illustrator and um, InDesign. And so I, I'm not really a, an active graphic designer now, but I still can use those skills and um, design things for the college as needed. And so that works out really well. And then I think just um, being part of Los Angeles and cause I, cause I came from um, Spokane, Washington and it's very, um, the art scene isn't very big and like, you know, there's only like one small museum yeah. and things like that. And just being able to, to come to California and come to Los Angeles and just be exposed to um, so many um, different diverse people, diverse artists and, and just see all the different ways that art can be created. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, um, you know, cause I, cause I graduated like over 25 years ago from Claremont Graduate School. And um, I, I, I just see um, much more diversity now happening than probably 25 years ago. And just so many different viewpoints, and and this year, you know, with the with the pandemic and um, and you know the the tragic death of uh, George Floyd, and just the and all the politics, you know, with the presidential election and everything, it, um, I just see artists uh, really reacting and and responding to um our environment right now yeah. and in kind of exciting ways yeah i i also think um a lot of what has happened now is is becoming more i don't want to how do i say it? artistic i guess it's it's being more brought out um than from from what i from what i saw i guess because art was something that uh, in school for me, it was just something that you, you took, um, in, in high school just to pass, but now I'm seeing more people being involved in it and expressing how they feel through it. And I think that's a really good thing because now we're starting to see this evolution of art that, um, that most people didn't really used to see a lot. So now it's being more expressive. It's being more out there. Uh, from what I'm seeing, it's being more, you know, political, you know, um, and I think that's a, that's a very good thing. Um, I, I used to see art as just, um, just something that was there, but now I, I'm definitely more appreciative of the, the actual impact it, it does have on people. Um, and I, I, I think I'm starting to, to actually appreciate it more because I, I used to see a lot of art and I just thought, oh, like it was just a painting that took a month or two. But now I'm starting to realize this, this piece of art actually says a thousand words. And um, I think it's very cool. Um, so what advice do you have to people going into fine arts that you wish you would have known back then? or tips that you now know that you want to express to people? Um, some, I mean, some of the tips that I give to my students is sort of, there's sort of like two different paths for um, kind of after you go to a community college. And there's a there's some very expensive um, private schools, and there's also the state university system. So I know um, students like to go to schools like Otis or Pasadena Center of Art or Cal Arts, um, and I think that's the, I think that's a good path if you're going into more um, commercial art where you're going to be working. Um, for someone else as, as kind of an employee designing things. And then for the students that uh, want to really go into fine arts and be an artist, then I really encourage them to stay on this, like the CSU um, path 
Um, so, because I want them to save their money. I don't want them to owe hundreds of thousands of dollars when they graduate. Yeah. Um, because it's very hard for an artist to owe, um, you know, hundred and twenty thousand dollars or something. Yeah. And so, um, I think that the that the state schools are are good, and then you still have money that you can then you can go to graduate school and get your master's of fine art, which enables you to teach. And so, like you can't really um, teach a community college or university without your master's of fine art. So I, or even, or even just your master's of art. So I encourage um, my students to go to graduate school and, and, and as far as being an artist um, to really immerse themselves in the art world and get out and go a lot of places, meet a lot of people, because you can certainly make your art and you can make wonderful art, but then you have to sort of, um, the things that really open up the doors is like knowing knowing a lot of people because if if people know that you're working and they know you then they'll invite you to be in shows and so i would just encourage um it's a little bit hard for artists sometimes because um, we tend to be a little bit shy and we just sort of want to work on our art and keep to ourselves but it's really important to try to push beyond that and, and get out there and meet lots of people and, and get really involved in the art world. Mm -hmm. How, oh, let me, let me try and explain this. Um, so now we're going to go uh, past the schooling and we're going to go uh, into your first job, your very first job with your degree. Tell me what that was like. Well, I mean, when I first when I first got out of graduate school, it was it was like it was super scary <laughs> because I didn't really know what my job was going to be. Yeah. And so it it took me um, a while. And I actually, you know, I actually had to get a job at a temp agency that had nothing to do with my degree. Mm -hmm. And um, just for like, I don't know, four five months, just um, work for the temp agency where they send you around to different locations and work in warehouses and things like that. Mm -hmm. But then I got, I got a door open to me um, as a substitute teacher at a place called um, First Street Gallery Art Center in Claremont. And they were, um, they're also associated with a place called Tierra del Sol. And what this place was, it was, it was a big um, sort of workshop. It was sort of a big room um, where um, disabled artists would come in and work. And so you'd work like with maybe four or five um, artists that would come in and they would make art all day long and you were just sort of um I, I wouldn't say you're really their teacher but you're sort of their facilitator or their instructor and so I worked um I I just learned so much and it, and it was really challenging because we we would have people with pretty severe disabilities like um autism I, there was this amazing man that was legally blind autistic and deaf and so he had like sort of all these barriers for him and he didn't he didn't like to communicate um, even if you tried to sign language with him um, and he had tunnel vision so he could see a little bit and but he would come up with the most um, amazing um, perspective drawings where he could draw anything in perfect perspective and he would draw chairs and architecture so it was just amazing sort of meeting these really talented artists my last year I worked there um, as an instructor for five years and then I worked an additional year as a as a gallery um, it was the position was called gallery manager and so like I would take their art and um, I would mat and frame it and um, put it up into theme shows and sell it and then I and then if you know um, usually people with disabilities don't have much access to income because they don't have jobs um, so then it was nice because I could sell their art and give them back the money and it was it was just very um, kind of gratifying work and I also started working in the um, at community colleges in the evening so I took some night jobs um, teaching teaching drawing classes 
also find that very interesting too that no no matter like what your disability is or what you are art can still transcend through that and it's it's a very touching thing um because art has been with us for thousands and thousands of years it's i mean it's how you know we know that civilizations have existed for all this time because of art and because these things that we found and i think that's very it's very cool like no matter like who or what is going on with you you can you still have the capability of expressing yourself um so during your first time working um how did you find your strengths and are you still finding your strengths to this day I think I, I think I found just strength in, in being patient with other people and, you know, recognizing and, and encouraging them. So I think that um, still today, I hope I'm doing that with my students and, you know, encouraging them. And I try to be very detail oriented on my feedback and, and acknowledge. Um, all the good things that they are doing, as well as um, giving constructive feedback as, as well. So, yeah, I think that I think that carries forward. And how how would you say these all of these work experiences that you've been through? Um, how would you say these have helped you become the person you are today? seems like a big question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think definitely the, the work experiences um, have shaped, you know, kind of who I am and what my values are. I think um, over time, because when, when you're young, um, you might have a sense of what your, what, what your values are and, and sort of what's important to you and then over time um i guess through through work and different experiences um it it sh it shifts a little bit as far as um just just i don't know kind of realizing what's important um and how you value your own time and how you va value other people's time and I think just um, an appreciation, a growing appreciation. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, with with any job, um, there comes risks. So, how did you learn how to take risks at work? <laughs> huh. um, I think. When I took the when I took the biggest risk at work, it didn't really have anything to do with art necessarily. I mean, I I'm always like kind of revising things and changing things and how I present things to the students or giving up control and like like letting letting the students control things and not like not feeling like I have to be like the director all the time, but the the greatest risk that I took at work were sort of um, taking on leadership positions at the college. Um, like, for example, just the, the past two years, I've been the guide to pathways um, facilitator and I've run committees and I've tried to um, help implement things that would improve things for um, students at Mission College, like our career and academic pathways. And before that, I was the academic senate president. So like, just like standing up in front of people and talking is not my comfort zone. I don't really like doing it. <laughs> but, um, but just sort of like with teaching, you just sort of have to um, get just get over it. And then you just get up and start talking. And I really liked um, sort of trying to help people like um, I think just being a helpful person um, was was really important to me um, when I was academic senate president and with guided pathways and and things like that. And so I guess that was um, 
my my greatest risk of um, knowing that I was putting myself out there and 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 people might um, you know just facilitating conversations where everyone has a different point of view or might disagree with you and things like that. Yeah. So how how is it how is it like when you very first took that leadership uh, role to now and how you handle it differently? Because um, I don't know, I would assume my first semester teaching, I'd just be a hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I remember my first day of like um, teaching community college. I was teaching at Mount Sac, and I remember I arrived um, on time, which is late for a teacher. And um, just walking in the room and seeing like forty students like stare at me, uh, I was ter- I was absolutely terrified on the inside, and. Um, just and then you know then you just start talking but then it's really about for a teacher it's really about preparation like like you have to be like super prepared all the time and so just sort of the gaining gaining confidence in what you're teaching and having all of your presentation materials ready um but then but then just sort of allowing for the flow of the students and and allowing the stu- students to talk where you're you're really focused on learning about them and what they want to explore and you're not you're not really their director or anything like that so i think um like now i mean like i'm teaching fully online classes and and i have all my presentation materials on there but like for example when the students put up their their work on the critique board or the discussion board, like they totally run the conversation. (laughs) Like, I don't feel like I I have to control it or anything. They do such a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. What are some of your most proudest accomplishments from getting a fine arts major to whether it was finally getting that degree or finally, you know, working with people that you wanted to work with? Um, I think just like um, being able to have art shows and um, be be just carving out that time to make art and then and being able to have shows and and have people sort of appreciate your work and things like that. Um, It's it's sort of, you know, it sort of feels like two different worlds between um, teaching and just just being a just being an artist they're they're sometimes they feel a little bit separate but then i want to bring them together yeah how does networking look like within your field because obviously with every field their networking looks a lot different like for me i'm doing civil engineering so networking looks a lot different with you know nasa internships calculus professors stuff like that um, but how does how does networking look like within your field? The the networking really happens when you when you sort of get out there and go to openings and you view other people's art and you you sort of like doing what you're doing interviewing me is you sort of learn to um, interview artists about their work and and approach them and ask them about it and then um, so just just sort of getting to know people and networking that way there's I mean there is a lot of networking on social media and um, through um, you know, artists have websites and, and things like that. And um, especially with the pandemic, then it's, you know, like having an online presence is even more important. But you can, you can join, um, you can join artist communities and artists associations and, and you can, you, there are artists run galleries and, and so, and just sort of you constantly have to put yourself out there you know and apply for things and submit your work for things 
and ask people to show your art. Which I find very interesting because you said, you know, a lot of people who like art are very shy. So they have, they have to, in a sense, get over that very quickly if they want to, you know, get themselves out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, what, so we've talked about the good. So we're going to talk a little bit about the bad. Um, what were a few big or semi big mistakes that you did at work or in school? And how did you bounce back from it? And do you have any advice to those who have made mistakes and how to bounce back from it? Um, that's, that always reminds me of like when we're interviewing people for a job and we ask a question like that and they get really <laughs> yeah. um, um I think just um, just working on, you know, communications with people um, that, that like if you have a negative opinion about something, um, it's better to maybe, maybe hold it back before you kind of let it loose. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I think we all probably say things that, that we maybe regret mm -hmm. and, um, and that we want to, you know, build stronger relationships with, with people. So I think, um, so yeah, I think, I think there was a few moments just, um, where I would have like to build a stronger relationship with someone mm -hmm. um and and just sort of being reflective on that and sort of modifying modifying your your behavior so it's sort of um better in the future i guess <laughs> yeah yeah i yeah mistakes look different you know with all sorts of jobs like i know for me like doing you know civil engineering my probably mistake would be i don't know uh not reading a blueprint right and costing the company a million dollars so that that's a different you know mistake that will you know have have a toll on a few people um so um how do you feel like you have contributed to society with a fine arts major because we all, you know, we all have different majors, whether it's mathematics or psychology, but either way, all of us, regardless of our major, are contributing to society. So how do you feel like you are contributing? I love, um, I love being able to, you know, to make be beautiful images and, and just get people to um, sort of slow down and appreciate things and look at things from a different viewpoint. And I think um, just like through teaching, um, sort of help, help the students um, have that space and that opportunity for themselves to express themselves and art can be, um, very sort of opening of the heart mm -hmm. and and I remember many um critiques where where students will like really open up and share something very personal about themselves and and it's a very nervous moment for for them to do that and but I've always found that my classes have been like always very respectful and responsive. And so I really appreciate um, being able to create a space um, for students to be themselves and, and to be honest with themselves and to that, that, that they get to go out there in the world and they get to create um, a better world for all of us. They get to create something beautiful, um, whether it be a painting, a sculpture, an installation, something they design, or maybe they're just, uh, maybe they're sitting on a panel and they decide, um, you know, what art can be public art or something like that. So I think, I think art is um, a really good thing because it just, it, it kind of warms all of our hearts. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, 
I also feel a lot of that um, with kids and how important art is with children because they're still very young. Uh, their brains are still developing and also their vocabulary um, isn't necessarily the biggest. So they're the ones that are going to be having a harder time expressing themselves. So I see it a lot because my sister is 10 years younger than me. Um, she, I see her expressing a lot of herself through art and how she feels. And I, I, I feel it because, you know, she may not have the biggest vocabulary, but her drawings are very, very expressive. And I think that's very important in kids too. Um, and how they, you know, express themselves. Um, so what were some things you didn't necessarily like about your major or things that you did like that you want people to know before they get themselves into, you know, the art major? Um. I guess um, some of, some of the things that um, I didn't like. I, I I mean I ran into like a few professors that I didn't particularly like because I felt like they were negative and not very encouraging. Um, I think if when your art can be maybe a little bit lonely because you know you're working on it but usually by yourself, um, you want to be careful about. Uh, materials that you may be exposing yourself to and make sure you sort of stay safe and you're using the materials in a safe way. Um, sometimes, sometimes like the networking can be a little bit hard if you, if, um, I think I felt this more in graduate school more than any other time, like, um, everyone feels like um, they're, they're trying to be an art star and they're sort of trying to make it. And so, um, so it feels a little bit um, fake or pretentious sometimes. Like, um, so, I, so you have to sort of gravitate towards um, people that sort of feel like you're simpatico with and, um, you know, that, that are just um, putting themselves forward kind of honestly. So, yeah, I don't know. So um, before we go, I, I want us to talk about something that you're a part of, and that's the Guided Pathways Program. So can you tell me a little bit more about that and why you're a part of it and how you feel like you're doing better um, with that program? Sure. Um, let's see. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I can share something uh, um, that I've been designing. Um, I can. Let's see. I, okay. Yeah, you can share this one. Let's see. <laughs> um, I, lo I love being um, sort of um, part of um, Guided Pathways. And what we're designing right now is like we have um these things called um the pathways so we have we have they're sort of grouping all the majors into culinary arts arts media and performance child family and education society culture and communication business law and public safety stem health and fitness and so like we have um these logos and we have you know a a number of different majors. You can see there's a lot more STEM majors than art majors, arts, media, and performance majors, or culinary arts majors. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to, um, maybe similar to what you're trying to do with your podcast, is make a clear path for students and how you get there. So something that I've been working on this year is that we're gonna have um, CAP student support teams. And through these CAP um, student support teams, we're gonna have a group that meets on a regular basis that include the CAP faculty, counselors, and we're gonna have student reps, we're gonna have a dean, we could have advisory board members. And this team gets together and, and looks at and analyzes data mm -hmm. 
about um, um, sort of student equity and if there's any gaps in the student equity and sort of um, thinking about different ways that um, we can really improve students' first year experience and um, sort of help them along their path, exposing them to different careers, um, helping them sort of get the ropes of what you need to do to be successful in college. And, um, and what do you need to do to transfer and to, um, you know, sort of be successful in your field. So um, I, I just think it's sort of an exciting thing. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I, I definitely think a lot of students are gonna benefit from this. Um, because a lot of, at least where I went, I wasn't necessarily the best high school. And um, we weren't necessarily told a lot about college other than to just go to it. So I think um, there, and obviously there are a lot of kids, you know, who went to bad high schools that probably have that same college mentality about, I don't know what it is other than to just go to it. So I think a lot of students will benefit from it and will definitely help them uh, get on the right track. So before we go, do you have any questions for me? <laughs> well, I was just curious about sort of what you're doing with the podcast and like how you got um, the idea to do to do this. Right. So my intention with this podcast is not to sell anyone a major um, because obviously with that comes very bad things people end up getting into majors they didn't want and they're stuck, you know, three years into it with a lot of debt. And my intention is not to do that, but rather to inform them of what that major is. So this is for the high school student. This is for the college student. This is for the university student who um, is still deciding on a major or rather in the major and they want to know more about it and they want to know what their potential is with this major, how it's going to affect them, because, you know, your major is going to affect your life. It's going to, it's going to, you know, it's, it's going to help you get a house in life. It's going to help you start a family. It's going to help you with all these major things that are going to revolve around that major that you decide to study. So, you know, this is literally people's lives. We um, or I am trying to to help. So with this podcast, I'm trying to help people um, understand that major and what they're getting themselves into before um, getting any further into a choice that they did or did not want to make. Because there are, you know, a lot of students that don't really know what they want and don't really know what to do. And I'm hoping that this podcast. Um, with people that I interview will help people understand what they're getting themselves into and maybe find something else that they like or maybe go further and make better choices with that major. So I, I really hope that this podcast will help a lot of people as it grows and I hope to inform a lot of people about different majors and different studies and how it will benefit their lives. That sounds amazing. Thank you. Yeah, so um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, Deborah, thank you so much for, for you know, coming on and being interviewed. I really appreciate it. Um, and I think that's all. So thank you so much. Thank you.